Welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we'll provide a detailed introduction to the D5 Scatter, a powerful PCG-driven scatter tool that helps us achieve complex and realistic landscapes with ease. On the left side is the complete interface of D5 Scatter, and the highlighted area is the feature we're introducing. Navigate to the top toolbar and click Add Scatter. Select Material or Select Model to create a scatter area. You can press the shortcut key X to switch between two selection modes. Select Model will generate a scatter area across the entire model. Press the Control key to reduce or add models. Click Create to apply your changes. The same goes for Select Material. Click on the first button in the upper right corner if you need to re-edit the scatter area. A scatter area or scatter highlight typically contains numerous reference points, which will emit different colors to demarcate distinct sub-areas based on a color map. You can hide or show the scatter highlights with the icon located in the upper right corner. You can manage the scatter area and content through the two essential sections on the right sidebar. The scatter area panel enables you to segment the scatter area or manage it as a whole. You can create sub areas using a color map with scatter highlights in each area displaying distinct colors for easy verification. Click divide image divide and import a custom color map to generate three sub-areas. Each will have a corresponding column on the right sidebar for streamline management. Right-click to rename any sub-area. The selected sub-area will be highlighted in the viewport for clear identification. Currently, D5 Scatter allows two subdivision levels, which means you can further divide the sub-areas. There are four UV mapping options. Fit, Stretch, Original UV, and Tile. In Fit mode, the map is fitted to the model based on the shortest side of the model's horizontal bounding box without scaling the map's aspect ratio. Stretch mode will stretch the map to fit the length and width of the model's horizontal bounding box. Original UV mode will fit the map according to the model's inherent UV information. In tile mode, regardless of the size of your model, the texture will be applied at a real-world scale of 100 meters by 100 meters on the model. Besides custom color maps, D5 2.7 offers multiple presets featuring common patterns for quick creation. Adjust the number of sub-areas using the Number of Divisions option. When importing textures with color transitions, this parameter allows for flexible control over the number of area divisions. The content panel controls the plant models to be scattered. For example, you can fill sub-area 1 with trees and sub-area 2 with grass by selecting the relevant area and clicking the plus icon to add plant models from D5 Asset Library. The content panel includes multiple parameters to generate various effects. The content column lists every type of plant model with its proportion allowing for individual replacement, hiding, or deletion. Click on the plant to access the following four customizable parameters. Scaling can adjust the size of the plant model. Probability of occurrence controls the respective proportions of each type of plant. For example, in an area with both grasses and flowers, they are both set to the same proportion by default. By increasing the grasses' probability of occurrence or decreasing that of the flowers, you can alter the appearance to make the grass denser. The content list will update the proportion of each plant in real time based on their probability of occurrence for clear and straightforward validation. 
Generating direction determines if the plant is oriented perpendicular to or along the normals of the model's surface. Adjusting its value allows you to angle the plant anywhere from straight up to parallel with the normals. Please note that there is another generating direction parameter in the transformations panel, and that serves as a global setting, enabling you to modify the orientation of all plants in a batch. Collision volume is an important parameter that controls the interval between plants. The starting default of 100 means that the radius of the collision-proof circle around the plant is equal to the radius of its horizontal bounding box. So each plant has its own collision volume. The collision volume ratio will not affect the size of the plant, but rather the radius of the collision-proof circle, thus affecting the spacing between plants. While collision volume has an effect similar to the density parameter, it actually works in a different way and is mainly used to avoid the collision between models. By increasing the collision volume ratio of the linear stone crop, they will scatter more sparsely across the surface without overlapping with each other. The collision volume is interrelated with the scale parameter. When the plant is scaled up or down, the collision volume will change accordingly while its ratio remains the same. At this time, adjusting the collision volume ratio will further change the radius of the collision proof circle. The collision volume and the density of clusters are also mutually influenced. If increasing density doesn't densify the cluster, please dial down the collision volume ratio. To learn more about these parameters, you can try them on your own in D5 Render. The above four parameters are designed to control the effects of a single type of plant while the settings in the distribution panel and the transformations panel modify the overall look of plants in an area. Move on to the distribution panel. You can use preset or custom black and white maps to control the plant distribution density. The darker the pixels, the sparser the plants. The pitch black areas will be devoid of plant growth. A gradual increase in gray pixels creates a smoother transition from lush areas to bare patches. Just like the previously mentioned color map, D5 2.7 features a variety of preset density maps with popular patterns to simplify the design process. For an aerial view with a wooded landscape, simply choose a map and you'll be able to instantly scatter trees into random clusters, eliminating the need for manual painting, which is very convenient. Density controls the overall plant density in the selected area. It indicates the estimated amount of plants per 100 square meters. A model area measuring 100 square meters within density setting of 10 should host about 10 plants on its surface. Multiple plant types within the same area are typically distributed in irregular patterns. Cluster size affects the pattern size. A higher value results in larger patterns with more concentrated clusters, while a lower value leads to a more even distribution of plants. Cluster noise can distort the edges of the patterns. Cluster Blur serves to refine the delineation of plant clusters. By increasing the cluster blur value, you can achieve a more natural transition at the edges of the clusters. Conversely, keeping the value low maintains crisp and distinct boundaries. To achieve an organic and natural landscape, you can activate the transformations parameters for random effects. Otherwise, the scattered plants will look repetitive and structured. Random scaling produces a variety of plant sizes within the set scale range. Random rotation randomly orients plants within the specified range for diverse directions. Random offset causes plants to randomly shift within the defined range along the XYZ axis, ensuring their placement appears more organic and less orderly. 
Adjust the seed parameter to swiftly change the vegetation effect if the current look doesn't meet your expectations. Or click on the icon next to it. Re-entering the original seed number can rapidly revert to the initial effect. Last but not least, D5 Scatter enables individual adjustments. Double-click the model you want to modify, detach it, and you'll be able to fine-tune it. That completes our tutorial. Stay tuned for more tutorials on using D5 Scatter to craft landscapes from the ground up.